Welcome to this video, my name is Mihai Arvai and today I would like to show you how to dockerize your Sitecore module and use your module with containers. Just a quick introduction, I'm a Sitecore MVP, Hackathon winner and Sitecore lead developer in, at Wunderman Thompson Budapest. In this video I'm going to show how to install a Sitecore module with containers, what are the major differences between 10, 10.1 and 10.2 version and finally, you are going to learn how to convert a Sitecore module into a Docker image. Sitecore provides official support for Docker containers from version 10. The available documentation is quite good. Also, the companion code is available on GitHub for that documentation. If you never ever used Docker before, these resources should be enough to start your experiments with Docker in this presentation, I'm going to use these examples provided by Sitecore from GitHub. In version 10, there were no any jobs for local development. That means you had to copy module-related assets directly into the corresponding Docker image, for example, into the SQL image. And some PowerShell script did some initialization, for example, deploy the deck pack to your database. When you moved your solution, to production using Kubernetes, Sitecore official recommendation is using external services outside of the cluster. That means you can use Azure Database Elastic Pool for SQL or Solar Cloud for Solar. In this case, you don't have SQL container image which hosts the SQL server, but you have a container which contains initialization scripts which deploys Sitecore database into Azure Elastic Pool. In version 10.1, Sitecore introduced Solar init jobs for local deployment too, so any custom assets is added to the init jobs container now. Also, 10.1 uses item as a resource. That basically means items can be stored as resources in the file system and Sitecore instance loads items from the file system. If you can generate resource file from your module items, you don't have to create SQL in each of container in Kubernetes, but you can copy the resource files to the CM or CD container. This highly reduces the complexity in your Kubernetes specification files. And finally, in version 10.2, SQL in jobs container was introduced for local development too, and the SXA module is using item as a resource approach. In the previous version, you had to use SQL in jobs in order to properly deploy SXA module into your instance, but from version 10.2, you don't have to because SXA item goes into the CM container now as a resource file. But why these are important changes? If you have ever tried to install a Sitecore module on a Sitecore instance, which was running in containers, you probably seen this error. It's about that application does not have write access in the file system, so files cannot be deployed into this application. Of course, you can change the file system permission within the containers, but you shouldn't do that, and let me explain why. If you change the file system permission and install module with a package installation wizard, this won't be the part of the Docker build, and this means Every time you need to spin up the containers from scratch or other developers spin up the container, they have to install this module manually again. So this will be a manual step and manual step means losing time and productivity. So please forget this way. So instead of the classic installation way, convert them into an asset image and install resources and assets during the Docker build. What are these module images? They just hold resources such as module files, database changes, or solar cores, which are necessary for the given module. They are usually created from Windows Nano Server image, which is quite small. It's only around 600 megabytes. Sitecore follows and recommends this folder structure, so we really, we really should follow this structure. Let's check each folder. The content folder will contain the application files such as binaries, views, JavaScript, and so on. 
The DB folder will contain DECPEC files with the database changes. So for example, it will contain the sidecar items which are necessary for that module. We will see later how to create those deck packs from sidecore items. There can be a solar folder for solar cores and tools folder for additional things and tools. Before we start, we can inspect SXA modules asset image. We only need to run the given image by calling the docker run command. The IT parameter runs the image interactively, so you will get a command line. You can override the default entry point for an image by setting the entry point parameter. This can be useful when you want to inspect the solar init or the SQL init image. Because the init image is automatically shuts down when the init jobs are done. You can read more about this in this blog post. Blog post let's inspecting some Docker image. I picked the SXA image because many things are located in these asset image and moreover I can show differences between different versions. There are module files such as binaries, views and so on separated by roles. There are solar folders with the SXA solar cores. There are DB folder with deck packs which has the sidecore item changes but in version 10.2, the resource site located in the CM folder, they belongs to the CM container, no DB folder anymore. And finally, there are some tools folder with some PowerShell script used for initializations. You will need the following tools in order to convert a sidecore module package into a Docker image. Sidecore Azure Toolkit, PowerShell, Docker and Docker Hub account, Visual Studio Code or any other text editor, the module package, Sidecore Courier. Sidecore Courier is optional. If you don't know, it allows to convert or create a Sidecore uh, update package from your serialized items. Also, it supports deck pack generation too. For generating resource files, from your items, you can use Sidecore Content Serialization CLI from version 4. First of all, we need to prepare a deck pack with the module items. The deck pack will be installed during the Docker build in the corresponding Sidecore database, for example, into the core and master database. You can quickly generate a web deploy package by using convert to SC module web deploy package command from the Azure Toolkit. It's a simple PowerShell script call. You can use this way with any version if you are not owner the module, so you don't have the serialized items in your file system. If we extract the generated web deploy package, you will see it contains one or multiple deck pack. In our case, it will only contain the core deck pack because the used package contains items only from the core database. If I add some items from the master DB, Another deck pack will be placed in the package called master.deckpack. The web deploy package also contains the module files, so you can use them from this folder or from the original sidecore package. When you have the serialized version of the items for your module, you can use sidecore courier. Just open a command line, set some parameters, and generate a deck pack file based on the serialized item. For more information, you can find Sidecore Courier on GitHub. You can use this way with any version and if you are the owner of the Sidecore module. In the Sidecore Content Serialization, Resource Package plugin was introduced in version 4. So if you are the owner of the module and you are working with the latest version, I believe you should use this way for your mod module items. It's super easy to use, just add the resource package plugin and run sidecar item rest create command with the proper parameters. So we need to prepare the folder structure for the asset image in our, in our file system. So I created a module folder and created a subfolder for a CM container where I will copy the files for the modules such as the configuration patches, binaries, front-end assets, and so on. The DB folder will contain the deck pack, pay attention to the naming, 
you should follow the sidecar.database name.deckpack pattern so the installation script can deploy the content of the deckpack into the proper database. If you have item resource file, put it into the CM role under update folder slash items folder. Please note, there is always a PowerShell script somewhere on the internet which can help you. You can find an extra resource PowerShell script in the Sitecore community docker images github repository. This PowerShell script will do exactly what we have just done previously, but it will automatically extract the web deploy package, rename the deck pack and move the file into the proper structure. Moreover, there are a more automatized way to do this created by Robert Hock. You can clone this git repo, copy your module package into the given folder and call create sidecore module docker asset image script. It will automatically download the Azure toolkit, convert the package into a web deploy package and create the proper structure with the assets and the docker file. You only have to build the image. Now we have prepared the assets, we can prepare the Docker Hub repository. You can open the Docker Hub site, create a user if you don't have one. Free pen should be enough, which includes one private and unlimited public repository. After you created your user, you can log in and you will see your dashboard, find the create repository button and click on create a new repository. You don't need to provide the name of the repository. You can decide if it will be a public or private repository. Plus Docker Hub displays a kind of cheat sheet about image tagging, pushing in the right side. If you manage to create the repository, you should see something similar. You can see the Docker cheat sheet again. It shows how to push images into this repository. So we have Docker Hub and assets prepared. Let's put a simple Docker file next to the prepared assets. As you can see, it's pretty simple file. It will pull a nano server image and will copy everything from the current folder into the Docker image. If you save this file, you can run it and your image will be created. You can build and tag your image by calling the docker build tag command. You can pay attention to the dot and the end of the command. It sets the build context to the current folder, so the command will build the image based on the previously created Docker file. After running the Docker run command, you will see the image contains the model folder, and unfortunately it contains the Docker file, which you don't want to share via the image, so we should remove it. We can prevent copy given files into the image by adding a docker ignore file next to the docker file. It works like the git ignore, so the files and folders which are listed in this file will not be copied or picked up by the docker engine. If you build the image again, we can see that the docker file does not exist anymore in this image. Finally, we can push it to docker hub by calling the docker push command. When calling the docker push, we should pass the full image name, including the repository and the tag. If we open the docker hub, we can see that all image has been pushed and it's available now for other developers. We can place a docker compose file into our project. So next time when we want to create a new build from our module, instead of typing this long docker build command with the image and with the image name and the text, we can simply call the docker compose command. If I type the docker compose build command, we can see that the new image has been built, tagged with the incremented version value. I can push this image to the Docker Hub too, and we can see that there is a newer version available, so other developers can choose between version 1 and version 1.1. So we push the Docker image to Docker Hub and it's public. The next step is how to use this image in our solution. I already mentioned previously, I will use the official Sitecore Docker examples to demonstrate it. 
Let's open your Docker Compose file for your container assigned core solution. First of all, find the SQL container and the newly created asset image to that container. If you are on version 10 or 10.1. Repeat this step for the content management container too. After this modification, you can use the asset image in this container's Docker file. This is the Docker file for the CM container. We can add our image to the Docker file as an argument and we can reference this image. Let's add a simple copy to the end of the Docker file. This copy operation will copy every file from the asset image CM slash content folder into the web root. When you are using copy statement in the Docker file, it retains the folder structure. We can do the same for the SQL image for version 10 and 10.1. First, we only copy the deck pack to the SQL image and after that we can call the deploy database command. That script will deploy the deck pack into the SQL server. Finally, let's do some housekeeping and remove the deck pack folder from the SQL container. For version 10.2, instead of the SQL container, you have to modify the SQL image of container. You only need to copy the deck pack into the resource folder, and when the image of container starts, it picks up the deck pack and deploys into the proper database. So we only need to spin up our containers by calling the docker compose command. If every container is started, we can log in into the sidecore and we will see our module shortcut on the launchpad. Before you start converting images, check on multiple sources if it's already available or not. The list, the list of available sidecore images and tags are available on GitHub. For example, sidecore provided images for GSS or headless services, management services, Content Hub, Data Exchange Framework, PowerShell Extension, and so on. Those are in the SXP slash modules repository. Also, you can find Sidecore's container on the Sidecore's container registry a couple of official Sidecore modules at this image, but those were created by the community. These are located in the community slash modules repository folder. For example, images for Coveo, X Generator, and so on. And there are some community modules available on the Docker Hub too. For example, Sidecore, Force Extension, or Vblog. And finally, just some extra thoughts. Use asset images and try to avoid using package installation wizard. If your project requires a module, get an asset image from it. You can use this technique not only for sidecore modules, but for anything else, such as adding extra solar cores, database, or patches. By this technique, you should be able to convert any sidecore module package into a Docker asset image. If you want to use an official sidecore module, first you should check if sidecore provided an image for it and use that one. If it does not exist, do not push to a public registry. Publishing of any sidecore assets and use of the sidecore brand trademark is not allowed. Share and promote if you publish your module available on Docker Hub. If you want to move your assets to the Kubernetes, there is a good article about how to do that. Now you are ready to create module image and use it containers. Thank you for your attention.